what's up everybody Ted purchase bold lens photography today I'm going to show you my workflow while shooting this house right here come on check it out boom check this view out right here guys sick we got an extra deck down below in case one's not enough and then up above, I don't know if you can see it from here, but there's a whole nother deck. Sorry for the uh, bad sound. I completely forgot to bring a mic, so I'm just using my onboard mic here on the G85. Um, so first off, weather. I live in the Pacific Northwest where it rains a lot. You can see today it's a little hazy, but pretty nice, clear skies. Uh, my editor will be doing a sky swap on these most likely um, just to get some clouds in there um, That that's the thing with weather sometimes I get suck But personally just doing sky swaps and this kind of weather. I usually don't have an issue The only time that I do have an issue is uh, well if you look at this picture right here. This was shot um, What was it Sunday? It was like rainy and foggy, so he did a sky swap, but you could see the actual terrain um, doesn't look that good, but I kind of had to do what I had to do. Um, it is a little hazy, but hopefully uh, these should actually come out pretty nice. As far as uh, stage in the house, well, there's really not much to be done. I had to clean up a couple things. There's some ladders on the side that I had to move. I usually do what I have to do to stage. If it looks like it's going to be an all-day project, then I just tell them, hey, I'm going to come back another time, but if I got to spend a little bit of time to stage, that's what I got to do. I like to personally turn on all lights. You want to make sure all your doors are closed because usually when you do real estate, you're doing multiple exposures. And if these are flapping around in the wind, they're going to look blurry once you go to merge them together in an HDR or in anything like that. Usually I keep my blinds closed if there's not a view. But you can see there's a little bit of a view right here and these blinds are all busted. I had to kind of uh, rig them up there to get them to stay because that was broken. Um, but usually if there's not a view, I'll close the blinds or I'll do a 45 degree angle on them. Closets like this one. I don't think this one will close anymore, but usually just keep those closed. I like my lights turned on. Sometimes if there's a mismatch light like this one's going out, then I... <clears throat> then I'll just turn them both off. Uh, I always like to have them on if I can, but that's not always the case. I think it looks better. Some people say, oh, turn your lights off. Yeah, it's going to be easier to do your editing and stuff with your lights off, but I don't really like the look. I don't think it looks nearly as good as um, having all the lights on. But yeah, as far as staging goes, uh, unfortunately, there's no furniture in here. So I can't really show you what I do normally. Usually if there's, I, I try and get it feng shui, you know, if there's some stuff that's a little bit distracting to the frame, I'll move it, I'll take it out, I'll kind of scoot things around. Uh, I usually spend uh, maybe anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes staging, depending on how much work needs to be done. But um, yeah, this house, I got all the lights turned on. I got everything ready to rock and roll. It's all staged. Uh, I am not doing video for this. I am just doing uh, stills and that's going to be both ground and aerial stills with the Mavic Air. And as far as my camera goes, I'm using this guy right here. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Come on. There we go. So I'm using this guy right here, Panasonic G9. Um, if you want the ultimate camera for real estate, I'd probably say the A7 III uh, would be the best choice, but you're paying a lot of money for it. Maybe one day I'll get one, but this works just fine for now. As far as lenses goes, I'm using the 8 to 18 uh, Panasonic Leica, so that's kind of like your 16 to 35. I also have the 12 to 40 Olympus 2.8 mounted on this G85. Um, there's not really a whole lot of stuff for detail shots in this house So I'm gonna be sticking just with this lens if there is some really nice stuff for detail shots I would be probably using this 12 to 40 um, If you want to go prime anything like 35 or a 50 millimeter prime works pretty good, too But we're not going to be doing that So one thing that's a must-have is a geared head. Why is this a must-have? Well when I go to adjust it you can see I can just turn this knob 
to tilt it any way I want and it just allows me to get a more precision tilt. Oh, there's one thing I forgot. Forgot my uh, little bubble level. Um, this thing just works a lot better than the little level down here with the one in the camera. If you're using flashes, you won't be able to use this unless you were using the sink port instead of the top hot shoe. As far as flash versus HDR, whatever, I shoot ambient brackets and I'm going to export those on Dropbox to an editor. He's going to edit those by hand blending them in Photoshop. I used to do HDR in the past. I have done flash as well. The flash ambient blend is a really popular technique because it looks really good, but you're going to see from this doing hand blended ambient, we're going to get some really good results. But most importantly, we're going to save a lot of time. Today, I don't have any broker here or any homeowner, so I can take my time. That's why I'm doing a videotape. Um, but a lot of times, I have a broker there, I have a homeowner there, they're in a rush, and they don't want to sit there and wait for one to two hours for me to bring out a bunch of flashes and set them up and do all that. It's just a huge pain. That's why I go ambient. Um, some people agree with it, some people disagree with it, but it works for me, and I highly suggest that you try it out too but ultimately you got to go with whatever works best for you but yeah that's pretty much it just the tripod this is just a cheap slick 380 or 330 dx i've had it forever and it's lasted forever so i haven't felt the need to upgrade but it's not the best thing out there it's it's not carbon fiber it doesn't go like a million feet in the air i need to do an upgrade eventually but that's that's what i got for now so all right without any uh, further ado let's go ahead and get the shoot rolling Okay guys, we're just starting off with a typical front corner shot. Uh, later I'll probably do something really similar with the drone, but I'm going to do it on the ground anyways just to uh, make sure we get the shot. Unfortunately we got some stuff piled over there, but I don't really know where else to put it, so well, hopefully this will still be okay. Let's go ahead and take the pictures. By the way, I have all my settings up here set to C1. All I have to do is set this thing to custom one, and boom, I'm ready to go. So. There's the first shot right there. Uh, one thing that is really nice is that I am actually, oh, let me take a look here. I am zoomed in to about 14 millimeters, so just around 28 equivalent. This is why I really like zoom lens, especially on crop sensor and on micro four thirds because you're not getting that compression that really gives a satisfying look when you go ultra wide. So having that flexibility to zoom in, um, with your lens versus with your feet or cropping is really huge just for even what might be considered a wider shot not even uh putting in your details and that kind of thing so all right let's go and do the next shot okay guys next shot we're just doing this from the other corner now this gets all those ladders and stuff out of the way so this is really the preferred shot but i like to do both just in case um the realtor wants both just general rule of thumb even if you're not going to deliver the photo especially if you're just doing ambient one other nice thing about ambient is go ahead and just grab the photo anyways you could always um you know send it to your editor or edit it yourself deliver it later if they wanted like a very specific photo so that way you don't have to make a trip back for no reason when you're doing exterior shots, you're going to want your tripod nice and high, especially for a house like this, almost all the way up, almost as high as you can get it. Right now I'm zoomed in again, uh, 10 millimeters. So let's go ahead and take the shot. Okay guys, so this type of shot here I normally don't do, but like I said, it's better to just get the shot just in case they want it so this is actually a little driveway thing not a very good one but <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just take a picture of it anyways so usually I only want good shots but sometimes you just got to get shots that show off the property and this is part of the property and people are gonna want to see that um, whether the broker puts that up on the MLS that's up to them but got to make sure to get the shot anyways just in case so I don't have to I mean, this is like a 45 minute drive from my house, so I don't want to go spend an hour and a half round trip just to get one picture that I missed. Okay guys, now we're getting to the good stuff. I'm going to actually do a couple shots of this deck, because as you can see, there's actually a pretty uh, nice view here. 
but I also want to show off the deck as well. So we're going to do a couple shots here so we get both of them. So here's the first shot. Set up the second one. Okay guys, here's the second one. So on the second one I'm just making sure my tripod's max height. I got a little bit of the rail showing so that way you still know that you're on the balcony. Um, but I zoomed in a little bit versus the other one where I was all the way at eight millimeters. On this one, I'm right about 12, so 24 millimeter equivalent focal length. Let's go ahead and get on inside. Just a little tip, guys. I know some of the stuff may seem common sense, but your key, keep your key in the door uh, knob. Don't take it with you. Don't put it in your pocket, set on the counter. Trust me, I learned that the hard way. I had a, a house where the doors locked automatically um, and there was like no extra key. So <laughs> it was like a huge pain. Luckily, I think the management company managed to get one. So yeah, keep your key in your lock. Okay guys, we're ready to shoot the interior. Just in case you guys didn't know, the whole reason why you use a level and get everything level is that if you notice here, just in case you're new, look at these lines, okay? Oops. Look at these lines right here. Here, these vertical lines. See how they are nice and straight? I'll reset this real quick. See how those lines are nice and straight, vertical, all that good stuff? That's because I am level. Oops. I'm not only level left to right, but I'm also level tilting frontwards and backwards. It's key to get both of those. If you need to look up or look down, you need to lower or raise your tripod. If that's not enough, or for some reason that doesn't work, then probably the best thing you could do is to get back and crop it. Or a lot of people like tilt shift lenses. I'm not a big fan of tilt shift, but there's a lot of people that are wholeheartedly disagree with me on that so let's go ahead and shoot this living room area i'm going to do two shots i'm in the corner right here because obviously we also want to show off this view as much as possible even though you can't see the ocean from this angle at least we can see all the forest and everything so let's go ahead and take this shot Okay, now we're ready to do the other side. One thing you notice is that I usually keep my doors closed, closet doors, doors to other rooms, that kind of stuff. Unless there's something really interesting um, or for some reason I want people to see what's in there, I usually like to keep them closed. It's gonna make your light look a lot better for one. Um, and just in general, it just kind of has a little bit cleaner look. At both of these shots that I just did, so this one and the one before, I was at nine millimeters. So I was zoomed in just a tiny bit. That's one thing that I do love about zooms. You can see there's a lot of blank space here to the left and the right and the ground here. So there's no reason to really have all that blank space with nothing there. So I don't mind zooming in a tiny bit, but I also want to show off that there is quite a bit of space here. So let's go ahead, take the photo for this room and then we'll be going on to the next. Boom. Okay guys, this is one exception to that room and that's when I'm really showing off the flow of a space that I do kind of want the doors open. This is just a hallway showing a couple stairs. You can see I'm in the frame, so I'm gonna use the timer, hit it and then duck out of the way and then hopefully that gets a pretty good picture. As you can see, there's the final product right there. Really kind of cool architecture angles with the stairs in the foreground and everything. So boom, let's go ahead and shoot this little bathroom so this is kind of everybody's who's a new photographer in real estate this is kind of one of their worst nightmares is shooting a tiny bathroom this ain't too bad i've done a whole heck of a lot worse than this thing um but yeah i just i pretty much moved this until it was right past the door frame and as far as composition goes uh, one thing you'll notice is that I actually lowered down my tripod. I took out uh, one set of legs, so I'm only extending one set of legs right now. 
and you can see I'm a little bit, you know, maybe about six inches above doorknob height. That's my go-to height for almost everything, unless for some reason I need to change it. Um, the only other times that I change it is if I'm outside, then like I said earlier, I wanna go as high as I can go. Sometimes if I'm in a kitchen, I wanna go extra high, so we don't see the bottom of the cabinets. And then also, sometimes if there's a view, like that view shot that I just did, I had that pretty much at maximum height because I wanted to show off the view as uh, best as I possibly could. But let's go ahead and just take this real quick. Okay guys, I'm gonna reshoot this real quick. I didn't notice that there is actually a stick in the window, so let me go ahead and redo this. And one thing I wanna say is about the composition. So I, I showed you guys why I shoot at what height I do, so that's pretty easy. So you guys should know about what height you need to be at on your tripod. You guys know that your bubbles should be nice and level. Okay, so then what's really the only other thing? Well, it's your tripod placement. On a room like this and on small rooms, generally you're just gonna wanna get it in the door. Um, you could do the one-shot composition in some areas that works, but it's also kind of a pain to do, so I usually like to go angle. Sometimes I do one-shots, but as far as getting your framing and your composition and everything, once I get it in the door where I know that I need it, I got the height, I got everything level where I need it, I'm just going to use this knob right here and turn this, let me get it to focus here. I'm just gonna turn this, you can see the door frame right there. And I'm just gonna kinda get this about where I want it. Well, do I want it there? No, cause you can't really see that tank too much. You know, I don't wanna like cut off the tip of the sink here. So we're about halfway between that tank right there. And then, yeah, and then that's, pretty good right there and then if I want to zoom it in a little bit I'll just use my zoom if I need to but I'm keeping it at eight millimeters for this so that's generally just how I get my compositions okay guys we got a little bedroom here so a lot of the same principles apply to the bathroom I'm all set up here we're ready to fire and I just want to talk about my settings so ISO you're gonna want your ISO on the lowest setting possible you're on a tripod you're shooting stuff that's still no reason to crank your ISO. Some people do it for lights, but I'm not using lights, so I don't have to do that. Um, I'm actually shooting in aperture priority mode, and I am have it set to f5.6. My lens is set to manual focus here, and I always keep it on manual focus unless I'm doing something zoomed in. f5.6 on this wide angle lens on micro four thirds, manual focus. Should pretty much always be in focus. Uh, with the G9 as soon as you turn it on because it is focused by wire it's going to put your focus right at about in, uh, infinity every time I'm shooting bracketed seven brackets one step apart I'd like to do five two steps apart one thing I don't like about this camera is that it doesn't let me do that which is pretty annoying so but I gotta do what I gotta do I'm actually just gonna be picking three of these brackets and sending them to my editor. I'm gonna pick one where the mid-tones look good and everything looks pretty much well exposed. I'm gonna do one that's exposed for the highlight windows, and then I'm gonna do one where it's exposed for the shadows, and he's gonna do his magic and hand blending and put them all together. And as you can see here, two second timer, or you could use a remote control, whatever you want. You could even not do it and just hit the button, which I've done before, but eh, usually best just to do a two second timer or something like that. That way you don't have to worry about any shake. Um, also, I always turn off my image stabilization because I have had that cause issues in the past. Same reason why I shoot manual focus, especially when bracketing. Sometimes if you're auto-focusing, you can switch a little bit and you'll get a little bit of blurriness on your final product. So manual focus, image stabilization off. That should ensure crisp photos every time. One thing guys, little closets like this, personally, I just skip them unless it's a big closet. I don't worry about them too much, so I've never really caught any flack about it, but it's kind of up to you, whatever you guys wanna do, but that's just my two cents. So if you are at a bigger closet like this though, you know, I'm not a big fan of these shots, but getting it just in case the um, broker wants the shot, I wouldn't, 
lose too much sleep over these ones or spend too much time trying to get them perfect or getting all the crap out. I don't think they really care about that too much. So, long shutter noise reduction. All right. Okay guys, basically doing the same thing here as I did on the last one, or the last bathroom I should say. One thing is that you notice I got these shower doors shut. They're just fiberglass showers inside. If it was really nice stone or something like that, then I would have them open to where A, everybody could see, but since it's not, I'm keeping them closed. Okay guys, just doing a regular picture of this room. We're at nine millimeters. Go ahead and take that shot. Okay guys, so this is just our deck shot. Showing off the deck, we're gonna be showing off the view here in a little bit. But this one's actually showing off the view pretty good too, so it's pretty common sense. Behind me, there's a big house. Why am I gonna show off the deck by shooting towards the big house? I'm gonna do it by shooting towards all of this stuff right here. Yeah, that's what you wanna show. Okay, I don't want to show this, okay, I want to show this. Let's go do our view shot. Okay guys, same thing, 12 millimeters, and it's going to take the picture. Alright, um, real quick, just in case you don't know, shooting micro four thirds with a smaller sensor than full frame and crop sensor. Uh, so the crop factor is 2x. So if I say 10 millimeters, if I'm shooting at 10, that's 20 full frame equivalent. So it's pretty easy to do the calculation. So shooting at 12 millimeters, that'd be the same focal length as uh, 24 on a full frame. Just because this is a wraparound deck, I'm gonna go ahead and do one more of this view, even though it's not showing the ocean. These mountains are still pretty nice and they're gonna wanna see that. Okay guys, nothing big here. This is just a nice, walk-in closet it's gonna be obviously eight millimeters at the widest some people don't like for whatever reason 16 to 35s they like primes or whatever or they like 14 to 24s uh i've used quite a few different zooms i've used quite a few different primes at the end of the day i think the 16 to 35 is just the most handy lens you're not going to see it that handy on this house but if you're skilled enough 16 is just wide enough to do anything you need and 35 will let you get those detail shots without having to swap out lenses. At least that's my preference. Um, everybody has their own preference. Maybe you don't mind taking a little bit more time and swapping out lenses for your detail shots. But for me, as the volume that I put out, uh, I need all the speed that I could possibly get. So for me, zooms are uh, huge and 16 to 35, to me, that's just the the best way to go okay guys we got another bedroom here um you can see i got the right corner there right on the rule of thirds and then on the other rule of thirds i have the edge of the window so the composition came out quite nice one thing you notice is that oftentimes especially for these small rooms especially for blank rooms i do not mind showing three walls i've heard some people say don't show three walls and I don't know where that came from. I don't think it came from any real real estate photography. I've heard people say that that were in film school that are filming actors. Well, yeah, you, well, you're not showing off the house if you're making a movie with actors in it. You're showing off the actors in the story. Sorry for the uh, chirping um, alarm there. It needs a battery. So that to me makes zero sense. If I was just showing off two walls with this, I think it wouldn't look that good personally. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's how I do it. You can see these splotches on the wall from some paint. Um, I don't know what they did there, but uh, as far as you know, fixing stuff like that in post, you got to understand most MLS have rules against um, um, modifying the house like that. False advertising. People drive. Sometimes people drive like all day. You know that maybe they uh, maybe they're moving. Uh, you know across state or something or across the country and they're going to look at a few different houses well they don't want to waste their time looking at houses that weren't actually how they looked in real life so just general rule of thumb unless your broker really tells you to and give them full disclosure don't you know change anything on the house now if there's something like furniture that needs to be moved i don't think there's any rules against stuff like that 
but the actual permanent uh, architecture of the house, you're not really in most MLS, in most states, the rules are you're, you're not supposed to modify that stuff, maybe di different in your country or different in your state, but that's how it is here. So I never have my editor fix things like that unless the, um, unless the broker specifically request it. Okay guys, we're in the good stuff now. We're getting upstairs with the best views and everything. And uh, yeah, so this is an ultra wide shot. We're at eight millimeter. I'm really just trying to show off this space, but I'm also kind of showing off the view. So shooting this ultra wide, let's go and take this picture. And just to show you guys this area. Whoops. This is a real big, huge open area we got the kitchen over here and there's a little tiny bathroom here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit up a few different corners here and really get some ultra wide shots and then i'm going to get some shots that are maybe a little bit tighter featuring the kitchen but probably not too tight because there is a chip in the bull nose here and i don't want I don't want people to see that. <laughs> um, normally when I shoot, it's, it's actually, my style's a little bit different. I'm going really, really wide with a lot of these shots. Usually I don't go so wide. Usually what I do is I, by the way, sorry for the echo. I can hear it echoing, so it probably sounds horrible on this mic, but yeah, I'll try to remember to bring my lavalier next time, but um, yeah, usually what I do is I do shots that kind of feature stuff like some just tighter shots like that feature a certain window or a certain view or a fireplace or a certain element of the kitchen and then, you know, go ultra wide on the bathroom, small bedrooms, that kind of thing. But with this house just being empty, not having furniture to really help me feature different parts of the house, I've been shooting a little bit wide. So let's go ahead and, and get a, a few more of these ultra wide shots. Again, this is almost like a safety thing. Like I'd rather take a few extra shots than not have enough. So let's go ahead and get a few. Okay guys, just doing one from the other corner just to kind of show the area. <laughs> Got a bug on my uh, camera. Let's go ahead and take this one. I'm just gonna go ahead, hit up pretty much all these corners at eight millimeter, get it ultra wide just to kind of uh, show off the space really quick. But before I do that, I just also wanted to show you something. You can see on this one how there's a lot of ceiling and there's a lot of floor on there. Well, being the uh, four thirds sensor that this is, four by three is actually kind of like the fattest uh, aspect ratio. If this was two by three, which is what pretty much every other camera is that is a micro four thirds, then you'd actually have a little bit of cut off on the top and bottom of the frame. Uh, usually uh, uh, what I'll probably do is crop this down to 16 by 9 if you don't know 16 by 9 is what most regular monitors and even a lot of phones are uh, 1920 by 1080 is a 16 by 9 uh, pixel ratio so I'll probably go 16 by 9 or 2 by 3 to help cut off a little bit of that uh, ceiling or floor if I decide to use this shot okay guys I'm actually digging this shot even though it's not showing off the views I really like nice looking lines i got the chandelier up here i got those stools lined up in the corner it looks pretty cool the windows even though it's not the view windows it's still pretty nice out there and yeah this this one looks pretty good hey guys this is a perfect reason hate to say this a million times perfect reason why i get a zoom even though i'm not doing detailed shots this why i really like the 16 to 35 if I was using an ultra wide, sure, I could be a little bit closer to that countertop and get roughly the same composition. But with a zoom, I can step back, I can zoom in, which is what I did here. I'm at uh, 14 millimeters, so a 28 millimeter focal length equivalent. And I'm going to get just overall the more pleasing shot. Um, usually on these ultra wides, when you zoom in a little bit, sometimes they sharpen up, the corners look better, vignetting tends to go away, distortion is not as bad, but then you also get more compression on top of that. It's just going to make a uh, better looking photo altogether. Boom. 
Again guys, broken record here, but I love zooms. I'm at 18 millimeters and this is kind of like a shot to tell a story more than really show off anything. Um, I'm just showing off the view here, but I'm also doing it behind the counter. So it's just kind of telling a story like, hey, you know, you're gonna make uh, breakfast for your kids or whatever. Well, this is the kind of view you got while you're working in the kitchen. People love this stuff. A little trick is if you're trying to get a good shot of the view, your height is really important on how that's going to play out. What I do is instead of trying to look, cause like look what happens when you try and look at the thing. Well, especially on a mirrorless because I, you know, if it was a uh, optical viewfinder, you could look right through and see all the dynamic range, but on a mirrorless you can't. So what I do instead where I'm trying to, you know, determine the best height for the view, instead of looking at the camera and moving it up and down, I'm just going to move my head up and down. And let me show you guys here really quick. Zoom in there. I'm gonna darken this up so you could see. But I just move my head up and down like so. See, I can see the view there, but what if I was down here? Then I wouldn't see it all that great. Let's get the counter out of the way. See, nice view, up nice and high. We can see Lake Lytle there. Okay, now what if I had my camera just about a foot lower? Well, now that railing's covering it. So if you wanna check it really quick, just move your head up and down at the level of the camera and see where you want it. But let's go ahead, let's get this one. This is the shot you want. So I made a little bit of boo-boo because I am zoomed in so far at 18 millimeter. Uh, this countertop was actually slightly out of focus. Most people might not notice that, but I did. Um, I couldn't really see as I was shooting and I had to recheck it. So what I did is actually just stop down to F8 and I focused, I moved my focusing point to these windows here. What's cool about the G9 is if I drag this little focusing point, this is a manual focus, not an autofocus, but it can still touch focus even in manual, which is really nice. And if I turn the ring here, you could see, oh, nope, it still put it at infinity. Okay, that's fine. Well, at least I'm at F8, but uh, if it was something a little bit closer, like if I focused on the countertop here, let's say, now let's see where that put me at. Yeah, see, so you could see that moved it over a little bit and that might blur the water a little bit, but I think just putting it at F8 really should take care of everything. Let me take a look here. And yeah, just, just from looking at the back of the screen, now it looks a lot better than the other ones did. Yeah, I could see right there. It looks a heck of a lot better. And what's cool about the G9 is, so I can do that, but if I ever need, since I'm in a custom mode, and I don't know about other cameras, but I know Panasonic does that. If I reset it, um, just turn it off and on. See, back at 5.6, my focus is gonna be back at infinity, so I'm all good to go. Um, some people do like to do the hyperfocal distance where it's kind of hard to explain. I'm not gonna get into it in this video, but it's basically infinity is gonna focus on stuff really far away. I want all that stuff in the background to be in clear focus, so I keep mine at infinity. At hyperfocal, what that does is you're focusing in a little bit closer, but you're stopping down, so it should still theoretically be in focus. Um, the thing is, is that it's really hard to calculate or uh, even really, um, manually set that because these cameras they don't have the most precise focusing uh readouts on them anyways unless it's a sign lens or something so some people like to do that uh they'll put up the infinity symbol and back it off a little bit depends on your lenses i've done it in the past but i found out that sometimes it's like it looked like everything was in focus but i noticed that the stuff that was really 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 far away uh in the background that there was some stuff that was slightly blurred so that kind of caused an issue um that's why i just keep it focused at infinity unless i'm in a situation like this where i'm zooming in um and in that case just stopping down to f8 seemed to take care of it and sharpened up everything uh what what i would do if that wasn't the case is maybe just zoom if that wasn't working then i could just 
zoom out a little bit and then crop it in post or something. But then I'm not gonna get that compression that's going to really give you that aesthetically better looking background. So just uh, kind of just stuff you learn over the years, but let's go ahead and, and finish this guy up. Okay guys, so even though I already had a shot of the kitchen, it wasn't really showing off this stuff too much, plus this gives us a nice close up of the kitchen, so let's go ahead and get that. Then I'm gonna do one more of the kitchen really quick. Okay guys, again, we are at 18 millimeters here, doing kind of a close up, just, I wanna show off the backsplash, because it is stone, although being a former mason, I can see a lot of imperfections, so I don't wanna get too close, so got a little bit further back, went down to F8, and then I used my uh, tap focus to kind of zoom in where this uh, kitchen sink is. So that shot is done. Okay guys, we're gonna shoot this bathroom. One thing that I wanted to show you, and it's just something as a real estate photographer, you have to keep out for, uh, you have to keep a eye out for this stuff like a hawk, and that is reflections. You see that right there? That's me. If I was to just kind of go and shoot this, bathroom from here you know there i mean this isn't going to be wide enough but you know if, if you don't do it just right you could see your reflections you could see your reflection in appliances and mirrors of course just all sorts of stuff so how do you get around that well you need to know the basics of reflections angle of incident angle of reflection and it's pretty simple if you're right in front of something you're going to see yourself so you can see me right there now look what happens when i just go to the side here Okay, I'm no longer in that angle, and that's why I can shoot in bathrooms and not really have to worry about reflections in mirrors or anything because I know about the angle of incident and the angle of reflection. When in doubt, just shoot at an angle. Don't shoot straight on. I was talking about one-shot compositions earlier. I'll actually show you one of those here in a second to, sh to show you what it is, but it's basically, it's just a straight shot. It's not at an angle like this and like how most of my shots are. One of the reasons I do that is that it is difficult to get everything perfectly straight and it's really critical to getting a good looking one shot composition. It can completely pay off as well and they can look awesome. But you also have to constantly worry about reflections. It could be just anything. It could be something like this dishwasher. You'd never think about that thing giving you a reflection and right now with the lighting and how everything it is, it probably wouldn't. But I have had just white dishwashers like that where you could see the legs of my tripod in it and stuff. So that's just one reason why I like to shoot it at an angle. It looks nice. It's cheap and dirty, but yeah, sometimes I do one shot compositions. But when I do those, I watch out for reflections like a hawk. Okay guys, this is a one shot composition. You can see it's just straight on. I'm trying to get everything as square as I can. So like this, I'm trying to get this as straight as possible. I'm trying to get everything as level as possible. Otherwise if it's just off a little bit, it can really ruin the photo. And you can't see her now. I just had to use the bathroom, but before I use the bathroom, you could actually even see over here you could see uh, the legs and the reflection so there's just one reason why I like to stay out of this. One thing I forgot to mention too is shoes. I was actually wearing shoes earlier. I went ahead and took those off, put my socks on. I always wear slip-on shoes because I always take them off when I go into houses. Completely forgot this time but I don't think they'll care. This house is kind of, you can, can't tell from the videos but you can tell from uh, once you're here in real life that it's been well lived in so I don't think they're too concerned about the shoes on the carpet. It's not like it's a brand new carpet or anything. Plus they're clean, I just cleaned them. So let's go ahead and get this balcony and then we'll be ready to drone. Hey okay, guys, pretty much same thing that I did downstairs. Gonna do one ultra wide to show off the deck. Oh, and by the way, something I didn't mention before, I probably should have told you this at the beginning, but you can see all this blue stuff. That's focus peaking. That's from the uh, camera. It just shows me what's in focus. One reason I like mirrorless is that, you know, for situations where I was zooming in or getting close to stuff, I could quickly and easily uh, 
see if that's in focus or not. So that, that can really help, but um, sometimes it doesn't. So don't rely on it too much because sometimes it's like not there and that it could still be sharp. It's, I don't know, it's kind of weird, especially when you're shooting with ultra wides. If you have a shallow depth of field lens instead, then I think it's much more accurate, but let's go ahead and uh, get this last shot. Okay guys, last shot, zoomed in. 10 millimeters the last one was at 8 so 16 and 20 millimeters yay so now stills on the ground they are all done so we are going to bust out the mavic air start doing some drone shots so one thing that i want to do is really of course show off this view as much as possible so I'm gonna get some really high photos. Uh, the package that my customer paid for was five photos. If that's enough, I'll give her five. She's a really good customer, so I don't mind giving her an extra photo or two because I appreciate her business if I need an extra photo or two, but usually I just do five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and do some, I'm gonna try and get it up in the air, kind of just circling around the house from the outside and get a few different shots that way. One thing with drones you gotta watch out for is I just seen a bird in that tree right there so you really especially where i live there's a lot of birds so you got to keep an eye on your drone otherwise a bird's gonna get it but yeah we're up on this hill there's a lot of amazing views so we want to show the view we want to show the house for us from some uh, higher shots that we can't normally show as far as drone goes just you know make sure you're in good weather make sure you take the time make to get your drone compass calibrated to get your satellites in order try and keep your eyes on it at all times especially for stills where you can afford to keep your eyes on it at all times i've actually uh oh you can see can you tell i'm sweating from oops sorry i accidentally turned it off there for a second so can you tell i'm sweating from uh shooting with uh, two cameras doing video and stills at the same time but yeah with the drone we're just going to try and keep it as safe as possible if the weather's bad keep it down uh, I highly suggest getting insurance, getting a good drone with all the sensors. I've crashed them before. It's not fun paying that repair bill. So, um, And because there's so much involved with drone and it's so easy to mess it up, I'm, I'm not going to be filming as I'm doing drone shots. I'm just going to show you the shots afterwards when we, once I uh, get back home and get in the computer. So yeah, let's go ahead and fire up the Mavic Air and see what we can do. Okay guys, drone shots are done let's go ahead and check these out real quick this shot right here uh this is just to kind of get a little bit higher view i'm not a big fan of this one because i did get the ladders in on the side there i should have moved it over a little bit but there's a house behind me and i was already really close to it so i don't know if i would have been able to get get the house in frame one thing about drone is that usually i like to shoot level like i was showing you guys earlier but with drone um, especially like what I got, which is just the Mavic Air. The lens only goes to 24 millimeters, and a lot of times it's not wide enough to shoot straight, so you got to tilt down. But and on drone shots, I don't think that looks too bad here. I was shooting straight on this side. These are just kind of closer. It, it, this, these shots are you can pretty much get these by using a pole or uh, you know something like that. That or heck even like a really tall tripod well this one you can't unless you want to go climb a tree because there's a big huge cliff there with a bunch of forest and stuff but these are just to kind of show the house off this one i'm not too big on but these two were just to kind of show it off from that angle and uh my package that i gave the uh realtor included uh five drone shots so sometimes it's a little hard to find one so this one was just uh it's just kind of the roof of it, but it's mostly just to kind of show off the view because just shooting from the deck with an ultra wide lens, it's kind of hard to really show what the view is like compared to real life when you're walking around or if I did a video. So this kind of helps show that off. And then the last photo here, um, you can see the house right here. And this is what I call a neighborhood shot. It's especially if it's like a nice looking neighborhood. I like to get up, zoom out, and just really show all the nice houses, how it's up on this hill. You got the twin rocks in the background right there. So that's just really to kind of uh, show that off. So yeah, that's the uh, drone shots. Okay, guys, so I got the photos all done, ready to send it to my editor. This is actually a different house, but same principles apply. So like I said, I do seven brackets personally. You could probably do it a little bit different. Um, 
uh, the Panasonic camera only lets you do uh, one stop increments when you're bracketing. If it did two, then I would probably do five shots plus and minus two. But unfortunately, it doesn't let me do that. So I do seven shots plus and minus one EV. And then I go through and I'm going to pick one out of all the shots. And I'm going to pick one where it just kind of looks overall like exposed. Like if I had to use only one frame, I could actually probably get a decent photo just by taking this one and editing it by itself. So that's kind of what I'm going for uh, with that. Then I'm going to get one that's a little bit brighter like this. I could, I could even have gone with this one, which actually might have been better because the wood's a little bit more exposed. But just one where you, you just want to make sure the shadows are well exposed. So... I actually should have probably went with this one instead, but I sent him this one. It should be okay. Uh, if he has to bump the dynamic range, it could get a little tiny bit grainy, but it won't be too bad. Then you're going to send one where it's exposed for the windows. Everything outside is, is exposed properly. So that's pretty much it. And then if you're, you know, you're shooting something like a bathroom, I, he'd probably be fine with one, but I just sent him three anyways for these bathrooms. But yeah, that's that's it. And you know, you're you're just gonna have to talk to your editor, see what he wants you to send. The reason why I just send three is because I live in a rural area and I got really bad internet. <laughs> so uh it just takes forever to send these raw files over. So I like to break it down. If I had super fast internet, yeah, I wouldn't waste the time doing this, but I gotta do what I gotta do to get my photos to my customer as fast as possible. Now I'm going to show you how you can find your own editor to edit photos and we're going to be talking about that kind of stuff and different shooting techniques. Okay so this is the uh, website that I go through. This is vnpix.com and don't worry I gave the guy plenty of crud for having this photo on the front. I think that was from a long time ago or something. It's not a good photo. I told him he should put one of mine. I can tell you right now that he has lots of good photos, like a lot better than that. So I don't know why that one's on the front here. These are a lot better. But uh, yeah, don't let that first photo fool you. This guy, uh, I, I, I can never pronounce it right, but I think it's Tal Nguyen is the uh, owner of this. So if you want to go through the same guy that I get my uh, photos edited through, vnpix.com, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description. And yeah, so it's just uh, it's it's a buck a photo is what he charges. And what I like is that he also does sky swaps on them too. Just doing sky swaps that could take me a minute, two minutes per photo when I used to edit my own photos. So let, let's say it's a minute per photo. A house like what I just did, if that was really bad weather, that could easily be you know 15, 20 minutes just for sky swaps alone. We're not including the, the rest of the editing. So it, it's really, it's, it's worth the time. I, a buck a photo, you know, this, this photo shoot that I did. Boy, I can't remember what I sent her. I think I sent her like 30 photos or something like that. So it's like 30 bucks. So I charge way more than that. So work it in your pricing. Do what you got to do. I don't think it makes any sense these days to edit your own photos unless you really just have to have it a certain way. Sometimes I know some people, they just really want it a certain way. And, and when you're hiring an editor, they're going to kind of do it their way. So, and it's, it's the same thing with us. You know, the other, we all have brokers that want everything done a certain specific way, but they're not the ones taking the pictures. We're the ones taking the pictures, just like these guys, they're the ones editing the photos. So, uh, yeah, that's a good one to go through. Or if you need to find, you know, you want to find someone else, uh, different price, or maybe you don't like that work Photoshop or uh, real estate Photoshop outsourcing or repo group and I will put a link to this group down in the description as well but this is a Facebook group ton of uh, editors on there just really really make sure you watch and and check for quality check and make sure they're doing good window pulls and the whites look white that's the sign of somebody that's doing a hand blend ask them if they're doing hand blend in Photoshop. That's what you guys want. This guy says HDR. I don't know if he does that and hand blend. Some people interchange those terms with each other. Uh, HDR can look good. I got a lot of good looking HDR, but I hand blend I really think is the way to go using luminosity masks. It can really get you the look of using flash ambient blend without having 
to use flash uh, it you can't beat the quality for how quick it is to shoot and that it takes me literally zero minutes and zero seconds to edit just cost me like 20 or 30 bucks a shoot worth every penny I save so much time on editing plus I know it's done consistent it's done really good I'm a good editor but the guys over here at uh, VN picks are better so let's say you guys want to edit your own photos there's nothing wrong with that what I would suggest if you want to learn how to do luminosity masks and all that um, I was starting to get into this stuff a little bit but that was right about the time where I just I just decided to go with an editor it was too good of a deal so unfortunately I don't have Photoshop anymore I got rid of it and I started using uh, affinity and capture one pro 11 instead so unfortunately I, I was trying to do luminosity mass and capture one but or not in capture one but in affinity but it just wasn't working <laughs> it wasn't doing it I, so i think you really want to get photoshop but pretty much the best way i think to do these luminosity mask and hand blending in photoshop is to get a program called raya pro I'll go ahead and put that in the description as well. This just basically, it, it, it's just a plugin for Photoshop that makes it super easy to do luminosity masks, real easy to use. If you want to learn how to use it and how to do luminosity masks, check out Raya Pro's channel on YouTube. And then also this guy right here, uh, Jimmy uh, McIntyre especially this video and i'll link this video and i'll link all these uh youtube pages and this is you can see here this is a video where he shows you in raya pro how to take uh three separate images you can see here one uh dark one medium and one uh really bright image and then he blends them uh all together and you can see this final image and it, and it looks fantastic because with luminosity mass you, you essentially you have like a lot of controls and there's a few other tricks that you'll see on these um yeah unfortunately i just don't have photoshop anymore so i i don't i can't really do a tutorial on it showing you guys how i do it but they, that's kind of redundant why would i waste a bunch of time making those videos when these guys videos are just way better <laughs> you just just watch his videos they're really good if you want to learn how to do a hand blending now if you guys want to go the other route and use lights that's fine personally i used to use lights myself but i just think it takes way too long they can look good they can look really good uh, sometimes i think they do maybe look a little bit better than hand blending but it, it, it kind of depends <laughs> you know it, it's just really it, it's I don't know I think hand blending still looks really good but I could see why people might want to go with lights especially really high-end photographers because they're you know the people shooting million dollar mansions that are getting thousands of dollars if that's you if, you know where I live there ain't no million dollar mansions they don't exist out here so it's just houses like the one that I showed you you know the luxury estate living in my county is whoever has the double wide but if you do want to learn how to use lights and do the flash ambient blending techniques check out rich bombs website or his uh, youtube subscribe to him and then also nathan cool photo this is a really good one and i will go ahead and put links to this descriptions for uh both of theirs so let's say you don't want to outsource your editing you don't want to try hand blend because it is a little tricky and you don't want to do lights or anything like that maybe you just want to go with hdr doing hdr i've done that a lot probably more than anything this video right here this is one of my videos where i'm actually going over some free photo editing software at about 740 on the video i actually do a real quick uh I wasn't meaning to do it, but I actually kind of do a tutorial of uh, editing some HDR and how I do it with Infuse GUI. 
One thing that I've noticed is that Infuse GUI, it seems to not work as good as LR-Infuse, which is supposed to be like the same thing, but that one's a Lightroom plugin. But since I got rid of Adobe, I don't have Lightroom anymore, so I was using this with Capture One. But I think the Lightroom seems to work better because I, I don't know what's up with it, but I know in this one, you can't export at 16-bit TIFF. You can only do an 18-bit TIFF. So maybe that's it. It was also about the same time I switched to Micro Four Thirds, but I don't think that's it because the EM12 and the G9 have pretty good dynamic range. They're almost APS-C like, I mean, a little bit behind, so I don't think that would make a huge difference. So I think it was actually the software not using LR Infuse and using Infuse GUI instead. Also, Lightroom, the built in HDR, is probably one of the best, if not the best, looking out there. But you can't batch. That's why I always stuck with Infuse, because in Infuse, I can batch and I can merge all my HDRs at once. It's super quick. If you do want me to do some more comprehensive editing tutorials using HDR, just let me know down in the description and I could do some videos on that. But personally, I would recommend if you're going, you know, is it, I kind of sound like a hypocrite here, but because I don't use Adobe, but pretty much if you're editing, <laughs> you should go with Adobe, but I don't edit anymore, at least real estate. I edit other stuff, but I outsource all that these days, pretty much everything. The only thing I edit is my videos, but yeah, that's, that's a good way to go. Um, there are other HDR programs like Aurora and Photomatix is a big one. I've never liked any of those. I, I think some of them, like Photomatic, sometimes can look good, but it's really inconsistent. There's all sorts of issues with it. Uh, yeah, that's that's a pretty tough one. Now, another th big thing is doing sky swaps. So if you want to do sky swaps, then you're going to need a program to do that. You could do it with just Photoshop, but if you're using Photoshop and Adobe, which I think you probably should. From what I understand, I have never used it, but everybody says Seamless is the best. Personally, I do it in Affinity, and I'll actually bring up the uh, video, the tutorial video on that right now. This video right here, this is the Affinity video that teaches you how to do sky swaps with Affinity. I could do a tutorial, but I'm pretty much just going to repeat the exact same things that are in this video because I do it exactly how this video shows. That's how I do it, but I think maybe Seamless might be better but this works pretty good but if you're doing hand blending and you're already in photoshop using raya pro then you might want to get seamless and learn to do it that way um, i'll go ahead and put a link for this video in the description one other thing that i wanted to bring up really quick was i did have somebody comment earlier when i put this online um, this is a finished photo from the shoot got it all back from my uh, editor some people were saying they didn't like the window pull like it looks too clear or whatever um i'm fine with this look because it, it's not really about what i like it's about the consumer and my editors really love this style i, I haven't got any complaints since going or or my uh my brokers love this style i haven't got any complaints since i went with my editor but this is also really easy to fix if you're blending yourself when you go to do the window pull with your luminosity mask all you do is you just lower the opacity and it will make it less clear looking so it's an easy fix so if you don't like the way your editor's doing it i i mean i'm sure if i told my guy hey could you lower the opacity a little bit on this he probably would but uh yeah so that's just you know just some concern that people had because I don't think anybody's I mean looking at I, I can see why people might be a little concerned about that um, and and also that's one thing about f uh, the flash ambient blending is that it, it does seem to give a really good natural look but this is still like fine I, I mean this is pretty good too and the thing about flash ambient is that it can take a long time especially a room like this trying to light up all these windows for your window pull and then you'd probably need multiple light shots i mean it'd be just a ton of work for one photo i simply don't have time for that but if you're like i said shooting a 10 million dollar mansion then that might be what you need to go with you need to make the absolute best stuff but i don't shoot that stuff i shoot houses like this
So let's say you do decide to edit your own photos. Personally, when I was editing my own photos, I never did any HDR or anything outside. I mean, I tried it a few times, but I never stuck with it. Most cameras today, at least if you got a newer decent one, you should be fine with the dynamic range of the camera to get it all in one shot. And you don't have to worry about that unnatural look. A lot of HDR and other methods like that uh, on exteriors, they tend, sometimes they tend not to look good. Another big issue is that sometimes they also uh, have issues with wind, like moving branches around. And when you're stacking multiple images, then those can look blurred. So then there's de-ghosting software, but sometimes that can make black halos and other things. So, you know, what I do is when I'm editing outside, I just, let's go a little bit lower. You know, I, I, I just uh, use the dynamic range of my camera, and this is a micro four-thirds sensor. Although it is a G9, it is the best of the best micro four-thirds sensor. The Some of the crummier ones might not uh, look as good, but... Yeah, oftentimes when I'm editing shots like this, I just I just use the dynamic range, and you can see the the color of this is. I mean, I I, I would do about that and then send it out. I, I don't really have to do much. The G9, uh, straight out of camera looks really good. Some other cameras that I own, uh, like when I used to shoot with Nikon and Olympus, I'd have to tweak these colors a little bit to get them to look nice. Don't usually have to worry about that with the G9. It's beautiful camera. Yeah, and when you're doing your exteriors, if you're just shooting, you should be fine with yourself. And that's with Micro Four Thirds. So if you have just a halfway decent newer crop sensor camera, then you should be even better off than what I am. And you and you just saw what I did right there. Likewise, if you're doing HDR or hand blend or anything like that, and you're shooting you know, just in a bathroom or something where there's no window that needs a window pull or anything like that. You could always just, you know, use the white balance tool on something that you know that's white and then, uh, you know, get your white balance all set. That looks pretty good right there. And just edit just a single ambient exposure. You should have plenty enough dynamic range. Um, one thing that I would do is, yeah. One thing that you do want to do is usually just for real estate in general, is you're going to want to try and get your try and get it really as bright as possible to where it's not too bright. Bright equals white. One thing that I also like to do generally is just use a graduated filter on interiors, drag that from the top. Add a little bit of light. Sometimes if there's ceiling, a little trick is just to do a little bit uh, negative saturation there. But just, uh, you know, looking at this, it could use a few more tweaks like on this color. Uh, well, let's see about that. You know, this could probably use a little bit less saturation there. Yeah, about like right that. And I could tweak and mess with this a little bit more, but you could see that it's completely possible to get decent shots on interior shots too with just a single exposure. Of course, you're going to uh, want to expose to the right as much as possible. So that means you want to get as, your, as bright as possible without blowing your highlights and, and ruining them. One more thing, that house that I shot, it, it really didn't have that good of finish work on it. So usually what I do is I don't do detail shots on house houses without good finish work but this one had pretty good finish work on it so the, here's some of my shots that I did for that you know just uh and of course with this you know my my guy's gonna edit it but if I was editing it I'd just you know bump the shadows up I just do a lot of it I, I just do um, single exposure and I'll, I'll just hand hold with like a fast lens these were actually all shot with my 20 millimeter 1.7 at 1.7 so I can get a shallow depth of field you know throw in a few more artistic shots so these you would just you know edit like you would anything kind of go nuts this is where you can kind of do whatever you want you know go put some clarity in there get some vignette give it a quick straighten out whatever you want to do But yeah, so just just uh, what I like to do is when I'm shooting a uh, house that's for sale is really try and 
and I only get it. Sometimes the houses are really nice, but they don't have really nice finish work, you know, like really nice tile or light fixtures or anything like that. So I, uh, it, those I won't do these detail shots, but I like to do them for the houses that do have finished work. You can see this one, it's getting the door handle, but mostly I got this because I wanted to show these really nice uh, wooden doors that are on it. Normally I'm not big on turning on faucets, but I do kind of like to do them sometimes on the detail shots. It kind of looks nice. Uh, here's a shot of a fan, the, this really big kind of cool fan there, and I, I thought like it'd be cool to do a close-up of it, but yeah that's uh that's the detail shots right there so be sure to get those they're quick they're easy and it's extra money that you can uh charge the customer and it's going to show the the uh, potential buyers how nice the craftsmanship actually is so that can make a big effect on the sales of the house okay guys that's it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this helps you uh, get an insight into the world of real estate and my own personal workflow. I, don't, I know I kind of did things a little different here because I wanted to show you options instead of giving you orders because my particular work style isn't necessarily the best for everybody. But anyways, guys, I hope you like this video and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, enable notification, and comment down below. If you'd like to support this channel so I can make future content, check out my website, boldlensphotography.com, where I sell fine art prints. You can also donate money at patreon.com forward slash boldlensphotography, and I'll have links below to all my social media accounts. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.